A Hilleman reported interim results headline earnings per share flat on the prior interim period. The CEO Richard Jacob has only been in the hot seat since the 1st of July. Earlier, Stephen Gunyan caught up with him. The stock closed up 1% at 10 Rand 50 today. Largely a continuation of policies. Really, we're on a trajectory of growth. Uh, we completed an expansion project uh, late last year, and so we're starting to deliver uh, volume growth uh, coming out of that project. Well, I mean, just, despite a, a, an improvement in the market for you, there have been a number of headwinds over the past six months, not least of all the strong rand. Tell us how the strong rand impacts your business. Yeah, we're an exporter. We export about 75% uh, of what we produce. The rand is currently at the same level it was in 2003. So our revenue really is uh, capped by the rand dollar, but uh, inflation has affected us quite strongly in the South African market. How do you work with the RAND going forward? Because, of course, we, we know that the RAND never does what you expect it to do, does what you least expect it most of the time. Do you have to work that into your model? And to what extent can you hedge against the RAND? We don't hedge against the RAND. At the end of the day, it's really all up, up to us and our operational performance. We, we focused on delivering out of the assets that we have. Uh, our business model is sufficiently robust to uh, withstand a strong RAND, albeit not at the same profit level. Of course, you, you talked about the expansion right at the beginning. As that expansion comes on stream, because that's obviously affected your costs in the six-month period as well, as that expansion comes on stream, volumes pick up. To what extent will that mitigate the, the RAND at these levels? Yeah, look, we have a, a significant growth ahead of us. Um, we really haven't delivered much yet from the project that's only starting now. And over the next two or three years, our volumes will grow consig considerably faster than our cost line. So that will deliver significantly improved pro uh, profits going forward. Obviously, the magnitude of that profit is determined by the RAND dollar. And of course, just with that strong RAND, you're also faced with cheap imports. And you have actually applied to ITAC to perhaps introduce um, more, more levies on, on cheap imports. Have you had any response from them? What's the chances of actually getting that through? Yeah, we've lost, uh, the South African market has lost about 15 to 20 percent to imports of cheap ex Chinese extrusions. Uh, we've submitted uh, applications both for rolled and extruded products over the last six months. And we're hoping to make some progress with ITEC uh, before the end of the year. Your exports, you said 75% of your product is exported. What markets are we looking at? Because, of course, we know Europe under pressure at the moment. Some areas showing uh, more stronger growth than other areas. Are you exporting to Europe only, mainly? No, most of our exports uh, are to the US. Um, but we have a very diverse geographical profile from South America, North America, Europe, the Middle East, and quite a large position in Asia as well. And prospects for the second half, you've mentioned this a little bit. What would you expect for the full year? Look, we're looking at uh, increased uh, performance out of the business going forward. Uh, we're expecting to see increased profits in the second year, half of the year. But as you know, the current strength of the RAND is quite a concern because we're an exporter. Where would you like to see the RAND from these levels? What would be a comfortable level for you? I think for, for us, we ask no more than just purchase power parity. To, for the RAND to follow uh, in inflation rate differentials between us and US or Europe would be more than sufficient for us. Okay, in that case, what do you think a fair level would be? What would, what would a purchase price parity level be for you? Probably 8 to 8.50 at the current level, if not closer to 9. Again, Simon, just coming back to the point that Richard Jacob has only been in the hot seat for three weeks since the beginning of July and uh, obviously having to navigate the somewhat choppy media waters at the moment. What do you make of the investment case behind Huleman? Bearing in mind, they did do that rights issue recently, 750 million rand being raised to restructure their debt and hopefully shareholders are going to see some value extracted from that rights issue. Oh, Brian, when, you know, I, I think the best case we can make for Humulin is frankly probably a weak case. I mean, they came to market in 2007 at above 30 Rand, they're down at 10 Rand and change. I, it, and make no mistake, it's been a really, really tough global market and the like, particularly for their sector in terms of demand disappearing, uh, costs in terms of labor and, and, and ESCOM and the like going up. But yeah, a, a couple of things. Firstly, they've got that deal with BHP Billiton and the supply agreement from, from BHP, which is disappearing. They haven't yet, they haven't yet nailed 
down the, the new supplier in that regard. Having to apply to government for tariff protection, that always worries me. You know, I, I, I don't like protection. I much rather say, go and do the best job and win that way. If you're looking for tariff protection, then I'm not so convinced. Um, we didn't see uh, huge turnarounds coming through. Yes, debt paid down from the rights issue and the like, but I look at Jumilin and, and I don't see a compelling case at all. The rumors today that HSBC again, we've seen them around for a couple of weeks now, HSBC looking to take out Old Mutual's stake in Nedbank. Old Mutual is 2% higher at the close, that at 13 Rand 85. John Cairns earlier said, certainly the Rand is rallying on the back of these rumors with that 736, 735 level on the dollar Rand. What do you think the story is here? Well, the RAND, I mean, the RAND had a strong move today. I mean, it'd be, it's been moving ever since the MPC on Thursday afternoon when uh, Governor Marcus did not uh, cut interest rates, left them on hold. Um, it could have been a continuation of that, but in truth, it didn't look like it. The RAND was very, very strong today. There needed to be a big driver behind it. But if we go to the story of someone buying out Nedbank, I mean, firstly, I mean, is it, is it the, the, the person who called Wolf, the boy who called Wolf too much, or is it that, you know, where there's this much smoke, there has to be fire? This is a rumor that persistently comes back, either with HSBC or with Standard Charter. Today, Nedbank ignored the rumor. As you said, Old Mutual moved to a degree, but the currency strength thing is a little bit stronger in the UK. I, I, the investment case for either makes a lot of sense. Um, does Old Mutual want to get rid of it? They sometimes seem unsure whether they want to be a South African company or international. Um, and, and at this point in time, I think they're a bit confused. Long term, I think they do question then is how's government, how are the regulators going to like another foreigner coming in and taking a majority stake in our bank after the Barclays ABSA deal and a minority stake ICBC Standard Bank and I think that's going to be the big stumbling block. I frankly can't see that the regulators allowing it to happen so in a sense I think it all is just smoke and mirrors to a fair degree.